Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. Today, I thought we'd switch it up a little bit and talk about some medical history. So this video will be about the history of mechanical ventilation. I have several videos about the ventilator. You can find them here. But um, just as a brief overview, a ventilator is the device that supports somebody's lungs when they are in respiratory failure. There are some early examples of ventilation that were the bellows of blacksmiths, which were adapted to provide air to people who were unable to breathe. The first experiments in mechanical ventilation for a medical setting can date back to the 18th century, that's the 1700s. However, they weren't very successful until the early 20th century. So prior to this, many people, like I said, they would either attempt to use an adapted blacksmith bellow or even use mouth-to-mouth -mouth ventilation for people who needed respiratory support, but overall, these methods were found to be ineffective. The first medical ventilator was designed in the 1920s at Harvard School of Public Health by Philip Drinker and Louis Agassi Shaw. It was known as the Drinker Shaw Ventilator or the Iron Lung. It was a very large, very noisy machine that would enclose the patient's entire body except for their head in this device. The way the iron lung worked was by using negative pressure ventilation, which is no longer used. The current mechanical ventilators use positive pressure ventilation. The way the iron lung would work is there were pumps and valves that would control the pressure inside the cylinder that the patient's body was in and the pressure would increase and decrease in an alternate fashion. And in turn, the patient's chest and lungs would expand and contract accordingly. When the bellows contracted, this would cause the pressure inside the cylinder to be raised. So with the increased pressure inside the cylinder, a patient's chest would contract, and that would push the air out of a patient's lungs. So when the bellows expanded, this would drop the pressure in the chamber, allowing the patient's chest and lungs to inflate, allowing air to flow in. These required, uh, obviously, continuous power, a lot of electricity, and the patient had to stay in the machine sometimes for weeks or months. The first time the iron lung was used on a patient was in 1928 and it gained its notoriety in the 1940s and 1950s during the polio epidemics. So after the iron lung was invented and used, there were many advances in mechanical ventilation. In the 1930s, physician scientists started working on positive pressure ventilation, which again is the type of ventilation that we use today. These earlier machines, again, were very big and bulky and were only utilized within the hospital setting. So the way that positive pressure works as opposed to negative pressure ventilation, the machine delivers the air directly to the patient's lungs under pressure. This requires a breathing tube to be placed through the patient's mouth directly into their trachea, known as an endotracheal tube to connect the patient to the ventilator. The positive pressure mechanical ventilator uses a motor to compress air and oxygen to deliver it directly to the patient's lungs. So the positive pressure helps overcome the resistance of a patient's airway. It also helps keep the airways open because at times the patient's airways can collapse, particularly if their lungs are ill, and it increases the volume of air that's allowed to enter into the lungs. And it also overcomes any muscular weakness the patient's breathing muscles may have. One of the first positive pressure ventilators was used in the 1940s by Dr. Forrest Bird and was known as the breathophone. He also created the Bird Mark 7, which is known as the baby bird, which was designed for neonatal care and infants who needed mechanical ventilation. The baby bird was one of the first times a ventilator was small and portable, 
And it was also the first time that a pressure from a patient's lungs can be transduced. In 1951, Henry Boyle created a simplified version of the ventilator to be used by anesthesiologists in the operating room. And as time went on, mechanical ventilators in the hospital got smaller, quieter, because they used to be very loud and more effective and more sophisticated. We are still seeing improvements and evolution of mechanical ventilation today. We're seeing new modes of ventilation and new capabilities of these machines. And in that time, they also designed non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, which are commonly used in CPAP and BiPAP machines, where a patient simply needs a mask so the machine can support their breathing rather than needing a breathing tube in their throat. So as you can see, over the past century or so, there has been a lot of innovation and progress in terms of mechanical ventilation. Mechanical ventilation has been used to save numerous lives over the past several years, particularly during the most recent pandemic. Non-invasive modalities are commonly used by people in their own homes to support their breathing and improve their quality of life in conditions such as sleep apnea. I hope you enjoyed this brief medical history video. If you want to hear more about medical history, please leave a comment below. Subscribe to my channel to learn more about the ICU and health topics in general. You can also follow me over at Instagram at the MD. Otherwise, I'll see you next week for the next video.